Hey guys, we are back with another video. <laughs> hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl Toya, your master esthetician here. If you're new here, I am, I am a six-figure esthetician, solo esthetician located in the DMV area. And I'm just here to give you girlies and men the tips and tricks on how to be a solo SD because baby, it ain't easy. <laughs> so, um, I had a question in my group. So, if you follow me on Instagram, Olive Glow underscore aesthetics, um, I asked you guys to ask me some questions in one of my broadcast channels that is right on my page. So, definitely join if you're interested. We go over marketing, we go over business tips, we go over just solo SD. So, you guys know it's hard to be a solo esthetician as there are big brands out here like EWC. Wax in the City, so much other franchises out here, and like we're all solo SDs and want our brands to blow up and be big as them. But you know, they all started somewhere, just like us. So if they can do it, there's no reason why we can't do it. <laughs> okay, so today I'm just gonna answer a question that one of the ladies left in our group, and it was basically just, what are the essentials that you need to do and know before going solo? So honestly, it's so much as you learn over time of what you really need and what you really need to do. But I am going to drop just a couple tips to God and let you guys know how to basically start solo SD. So a lot of people think like, oh, they had to jump out there and just get a suite and, you know, work out of somewhere like no so if you have a home that has like a separate entrance you can start taking models at home or within your institution so i know at my esthetician program we were able to have models come in and during that clinical portion we had models come in and i was able to get a rack of people in <laughs> and i suggest you guys do that too also they do have where um well, my school had it where they actually book for you to have clients on certain services. So if you can, maybe they may not want you to record them, but if you can bring in your own clients during your clinical session um, within your program, definitely do that. So during that time, I had my SD bestie, y'all. I love that I had an SD bestie because I was able to be like, did you see this new product that came out? Did you see this? So. Um, I had my SD bestie and we were we decided to take a lot of models while we did our clinicals when I was in basics. So when I was in my basic program, I ended up recording everything that I was doing. And this is when content wasn't even that big. I feel like content got bigger over time. Before, all you needed was word of mouth. <laughs> Before, you just needed word of mouth. Now, people don't even care. Like, they want to see your content. They don't, it's not word of, word of mouth no more in 2024. So, granted, that does play a part. Uh, let me rephrase that. Word of mouth does play a part, but content gets you seen more nowadays because there are people on Instagram, Facebook, and they want to see your work and who you are and what you do. So, back then, when I first started, um, I ended up doing a lot of model calls. I ended up taking people, Brazilian waxes for like $30, <laughs> Brazilian waxes. And like I was just doing tips, like just using utilizing my tools. So definitely my first tip for you guys, the essential to do and know is take models. Take as many models you can. The more you practice, the more the better you get. Like don't think that you're gonna come out here and be top notch esthetician just because you finished school. No, it's okay to learn, get a mentor, and practice. So I was practicing Brazilian waxes like crazy, you guys, because. For me, I wanted to be in the wax game more than skincare at the time. So for me, I wanted to learn everything waxing, like how hot the wax pot needs to be, what is the best brand to work with, what is a good wax company, what is a good wax bead. So my advice to you guys would always be take models. If you can take as many pictures as you can, take pictures of the process, before and after pictures, take pictures of your client review. So those are like the top three um, that could just give you a whole bunch of clients just by one model. <laughs> so imagine if you had 10 models, you have about three different content per model. So that's like 30 content ideas and that's enough to last you for a whole month. Um, just to put it on Twitter, Facebook, everywhere that you can. So for one, like I said, for you guys, definitely take those models and 
just take pictures. Because when you go back and look at your feed, you're like, dang, I started off like this. Now I'm the GOAT. <laughs> so definitely do that um, before starting your business. And then once you do get your license and everything, and if you still want to like work in your home for a little bit, do that. Don't think that you need to start in a suite and, you know, work in a home maybe for you know, a couple months, I wouldn't say stay there for years on end, but there is estheticians that do have home base and they have a private section that works out for them. Me at the time, I didn't, I just had a basement with a separate entrance and I personally don't like a lot of energies in my home, but some people are okay with that. So I'm not gonna knock it. If you like that, I love it. <laughs> it didn't work for me. So I ended up partnering with um, a makeup artist and we got a suite together. So if you can partner with a your SD bestie um, or someone in the beauty industry and get a suite together, that will work out really good. So we ended up getting a suite and our suite was like $8.99 a month. And we're like, whoa, but for, for, for both of us, we kind of split the price, um, $400 each. So that was super cheap because at the time, I was working my nine to five, so I was still able to pay the rent and also take clients and charge them regular price because now I am licensed. So I do advise if you do have that SD bestie or someone in the beauty field or someone that will allow you to come and work at their location in the suite for an inexpensive, inexpensive price, go ahead and do it. Um, with that being said, you can start to promote your location. You can promote how it looks inside. Like people wanna see everything. They wanna see your location. They, I feel like most clients love when it's like a separate location rather than your house, but to each his own. <laughs> so definitely coming out, get that location, um, partner with somebody, you know, do all that. <laughs> okay, three also, I would say kind of know how much you're spending per product. So for me, um, when it comes to my tongue depressors, when it comes to, and this is me talking about waxing, because this is what I mainly did when I came out of esthetician school. So when it comes to your tongue depressors, um, your wax, your supplies that you're using, definitely count out how much you're using per person. So for me, I made sure I didn't use no more than eight wax sticks or no more than 10 wax sticks max, because it's like, this is costing me money and I don't wanna just be throwing out supplies when it's expensive. So some websites that I got some of my supplies from were wish.com. Um, those are where I got my fans from when I did my facials and my um, aesthetic wipes. So know how to market and know how to find certain supplies that you can get at cheaper locations. I also went to a nail supply store. They have them all over like beauty locations where you can pick up wax there if you need to get wax in person or you can get wax from someone. So I ended up doing so much content that brands reached out to me and I ended up working with a wax company. And with this wax company, I was able to get wax sent to me and promote it because they love the content, they love what I did. And with that being said, I would say definitely try to, if there's a wax company that you like or a skincare company that you like, reach out to them. <laughs> reach out to them, let them know you're an esthetician, you love their product, yada, yada, boo, and you would love to sample or you would love to know if they have any brand ambassador deals or products or and they will send it to you because you're an esthetician and you're the biggest market for them you're the one who is buying their products you're marketing their products and you're their sole customer <laughs> so after that i would definitely say um just know your supplies know where to get items from that is not costing you a lot overhead because be mindful you're a solo sd so all this money is coming out of your pocket so don't forget that <laughs> also budgeting. So now this is something I wish I knew when I first came out, but it's important to budget. So your business money is not your money. And for me, when I was getting my 10K months and money coming in, I'm like, yeah, like my rent is paid a cheap $400 and I can do whatever. I can buy this and that. No. So definitely I always tell everyone budget. So if you have a financial advisor and you don't have to go out and get one, if you have a bank, in a business bank account, you can literally go to that bank and 
meet up with that financial advisor who can help you, you know, money management, budget properly, all of that. So I wish I knew this back then, but I'm letting y'all know. So I'm currently with Navy Federal and they have great financial advisors, but if you have a, another bank, I'm sure they have financial advisors as well. Just reach out. So during this time, I would definitely say budget, um, know where your money's going and know that your business money, especially in the first one to two years, is not your money. That money is being put back into your business so you can upgrade. So now that you don't have to get these cheap products, you can upgrade and get a nice LED therapy light or a nice bed and not use a massage table. You know, you might want a recliner bed that goes up and down. <laughs> so definitely use that money. Just think of your business money as money that's just going back into your business to help your business elevate, okay? <laughs> And then lastly, I will also tell you guys to market and set your business up properly. So what I mean by setting your business up property, it properly is getting that LLC, that EIN, that um, other, you know, your state regulations that you need to open up a business because you don't want to get caught up with IRS when you start to get that flow of money coming in and they're like, is this business even a business is this an llc <laughs> so definitely definitely work with someone whether it's a mentor in the beauty field or someone who's an accountant or cpa just to make sure your business is structured property properly and you have that business plan in place because you need that business plan so you know how your business is about to run in the next five years and that is so important and a lot of people don't know that they just step out there and like okay i know i'm gonna do this for my business right now but you need to figure out what are you going to do with your business in the upcoming years you need to have a plan that's the only way these businesses are so successful because they actually have a plan and know how their business is going to run each year and what they're going to do to make sure their business is meeting those needs or meeting those goals that are that is in their business plan okay <laughs> and then lastly um, i'm gonna go over marketing so marketing plays a huge role within your business especially in today's times marketing is so big whether it's marketing in the newspaper um in the mail marketing on instagram social medias tiktoks you need to market and you need to make sure you have a photographer and graphic designer on your team and i say this because professional pictures and just showing your brand is luxury and showing professionalism makes everyone want to come to you they don't want to go to someone whose brand is sloppy logo don't really look that good got a character face not really showing up on instagram not really showing up for their brand so you guys know this if you're going to tesla you look at the way they market their brand look at the way they market actual tesla that makes people want to get a tesla you know so you have to make people feel like they want to shop at your store or your brand so these are just a few essentials um that i wanted to let you guys know about how to become a solo sd and what to do in order to be a solo sd of course there's so much more that i would love to go more in detail about if you guys want to know more please uh like and comment down below and subscribe to my channel and and I do offer a mentorship, so definitely look at the link down below. Love you guys always. Bye, guys.